Doubled up. Doubled up in the weeds. That's what I'm talking about. Got a nice walleye? Heck yeah, dude. Oh yeah, there we go. Weed walleye after weed walleye. Doubled up. There Look we at go. These buttes. Are you ready? I am ready. How ready are you? Uh, as ready as you can be fishing Hayward. As ready as you can be. Wow, it's just discriminating against my home bodies of water. What is going on guys? We are back with another video. I am back from Minnesota. We are back home. Shelby is now on the boat. And uh, yeah, what are we doing today, Shelby? We are gonna troll for walleye in the weeds weeds we walleye. are fishing in the weeds walleye weeds walleye that's how i that's how i plot these things up i actually kind of queued this video up yesterday while i was fishing deep rock and i kind of showed a bunch of deep spots and i was like you know in some lakes they also have a weed bite too it just so happened we got kind of a gorgeous little bit of wind a little bit of south wind a little bit of overcast in the sky perfect musky day perfect also weed walleye day yeah and today we are fishing walleyes in the Weeds. Weeds. Oh got to drive it into their heads sometimes. Yeah. You got to make the point of these videos vividly clear. And uh, today we're going to go all into basically what kind of spots we look for walleyes in the weeds at and how they relate to weeds. And the key to finding walleyes in the weeds is either Hummingbird 360, which is a major tool, or your side imaging. We're going to pull spinners today. You can jig in the weeds. You can slip bobber in the weeds. There's a lot of different ways to fish the weeds. Um, we're going to pull spinners uh, just because that's kind of the way this lake lays out. And we'll kind of go into how these fish are relating to structure. Like I said, where you can look for them. Hopefully catch some fish. What's your prediction? Oh, very slim chance. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm excited about it though. We'll try. Oh, another thing we're going to go into is how you can set up your rods to kind of maximize your efficiency fishing this way. So stay tuned. We're going to get the Minkota down here. Even Surly's excited. Um, Shelby's not that excited. But uh, hopefully once we have a fish on, you will be excited. Yeah, that's all I'm here for. Just reeling them in. That's what you're here for, huh? Yep. reel up a little bit. Yeah, it's a fish, Shelby, grab it. Got him? I got a small mouth, a dinker. You got, I don't know what you got. I don't know what I got. Fish number one, excluding this dinker small mouth, but just getting started out here. What do you got, Shelbster walleye? Tell me a good sign, tell me something good. The way it's running, I'm gonna. Walleye. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Way up in the weeds here. Bring them in. All right, number one. Walleyes in the weeds. And I absolutely love running that that long outside rod like that. That's that uh, 11 and a half foot. Um, it's kind of a great outside like lead rod or something like that. But it's super awesome when you're running a lot of these kind of tight quarters where you're trying to stack lines. We'll talk all about how we're stacking lines. Do some talking, Shelby. Okay, pulling spinners and crawlers. This is our first walleye. In the weeds. It's been a minute since I caught a walleye. Walleye in the weeds. That's the thief. Do that, like a background. I can't like make a whole image look like that, really. Like, say I had a solid, oh. That's fish, Shelby. Grab it right there. It's a nice one, too. Oh, so we got four rods out. Three got Colorado blades on it. One's got kind of a a smiley blade, a silver smiley blade on there, and that one's got popped twice now. What do you think about that? Nice walleye. Yeah. You gonna say so? I'm gonna say it is. I'm gonna bring it up this side. Okay. Whatever you want to do, I guess. Cool. If you want to bring it up that side, you bring it up that side. You just bring her to daddy. <laughs> Uh, pretty good amount of fish here, really. 
Oh yeah. Bring her on in, and that's just a classic weed walleye right there for the summertime. 18 incher. There we go. Good work. Just let that first one go, and there's number two. Good work. Good work. We on them, baby. We on them. Is right. We'll throw up a screenshot right here. Of these pods of fish we're we're fishing. But we'll definitely take a deep dive into kind of uh, what we're looking at on the graph and where you guys can find a lot of these weed fish. Weed wallet! Good work, good work, good work. Get a picture of me, Big Daddy. Are you calling me Big Daddy on camera? Are we leaving, oh, are we leaving that in the video? I think you can get that out. We can, though. I don't okay. care. All right, when we're talking about weed walleyes, um, every, some lakes will have a much stronger weed bite than other lakes. Some lakes you might go on that might have a weed edge that's like five feet deep, um, and that might have a less of a chance of having a, a good weed bite. But a lot of your standard kind of cookie cutter walleye lakes, whether that's like a metro style lake, you know, visibility, two, three, four feet, um, kind of that coontail line at, you know, 10, 12 feet, or a lot of your kind of clear bodies of water that might have a cabbage line out to 14 feet and some sand grass out to 20 feet. Um, a lot of those lakes will have a very strong weed bite throughout the summer. Now, the one thing like all weed areas that we're looking for, um, spots that are very basin oriented, basin oriented, basin oriented. That is kind of key to almost no matter where you're fishing in the middle of summer. So fishing a lot of these spots that are basin oriented and a lot of complexity, that's another thing I look for. So we'll kind of throw up some screenshots right here of some, of some spots that are applicable. Maybe it's a spot that looks something like this you can see you got a lot of deep water out here and uh, you know you got this large weed flap you know maybe a spot like this right here a big shoreline shelf that comes way out something like this is exactly what you're looking for now the next thing I like to do is take my hummingbird and the first thing I want to do is, is figure out how deep that weed edge is if that weed edge is like 14 feet I generally like to set my green highlight area out to 14 feet so then I know just to skirt right on the outside of that now weeds are generally pockety so you might have like uh, weeds out to 15 and then they kind of suck into 12 and they're out 15 but that's going to give you a good bearing on kind of where to start some lakes will have more of a clean cut weed edge than other lakes so generally we're looking for these areas that are very basin oriented um, have a lot of deep water around them some good complexity and then we get in there and start looking for the fish and in a second here we'll kind of show you exactly what those fish are going to look like on the graph Shelby. Oh God! Well, you know, right there. It, I know that was kind of a herky jerky getting it out of the rod holder situation. Yeah, it was. Don't horse him now, Shelby. Don't horse oh, him. Oh, don't tell me, Mister. Don't go horsing my fish. Got to be a nice walleye, right? Got to be. Oh. Oh, we got another. Oh no! I'm just driving us right into the weeds here. Oh, where am I going with this? Okay. Oh yeah, nice oh, walleye. I got a beaut oh yeah there we go weed walleye after weed walleye after weed walleye and uh we're killing it aren't we not been fishing for very long and we're putting them in the boat i like it i like it a lot fishing in about 14 feet of water and uh weed edge ends at 14 or 13 feet so our inside rods are just kind of getting hung up once in a while in the weeds which is just kind of nature of the beast Yay, I'm so happy to be back on the walleyes. Good work, good work. If you can't tell, I'm really sick. Sorry for the voice. That's a nice chunky one. It is. Let him go. He's got to live a full, prosperous life. Oh, he's feisty. He's a feisty one. Good work. What's it like to catch just a ton of walleyes? Oh, oh, I can't even begin to tell you. can't you. even begin, huh? Just brings... It brings back some good memories. Brings joy to my heart watching you reel in. Incredible fish like that. All right, so once we're kind of around one of these large weed areas, you know, the next thing to do is start looking for fish. Side imaging is key when you're looking for a fish in a lot of these weed areas. And it's gonna be able to show you the weeds, it's gonna be able to show you the fish, it's gonna be able to show you how they're relating to those fish. And 99% of the time, the screen I'm running looks something like this right here. It's a split screen of sonar and side imaging. You can just run straight side imaging too, but having something that shows you also what's straight down is gonna give you a large advantage as well. So generally I'm running that kind of split screen where I just need a little bit of that sonar column because I, I don't really care what's you know 100 feet behind me on sonar. I like running and most of my screen side imaging so I get some more clarity. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. 
And as far as what the fish are gonna look like, um, we'll throw up some screenshots right here. Here's a good screenshot that we just took on this spot. And you can see the weed line real defined right here, definite, and then the fish just outside of that weed area. I think a lot of people have this big misconception that the walleyes are always buried right in the weeds when that's just never really the case. They're very rarely are the fish you're targeting just buried into a weed um, where you're just not gonna see them. And of course, if they were in that situation, you wouldn't see them um, so much on side image. They'd just be in that real thick stuff. Um, so we'll throw up some more screenshots right here. Here you go. Here you can see there's a bunch of weeds here and a school of fish right in there. Now, another thing I really like using is my Hummingbird 360 for this application. And the reason for that is, especially at the first spot we were fishing, um, we weren't using it that much because it was kind of more of a straight line spot. I kind of know where those pods of fish are and it's a pretty kind of straightforward type of thing. The weed edge is real straight. But if you get on a new body of water, a spot you're kind of a little bit more unfamiliar with, one thing I really like to do is run that 360 and that's going to show me fish up ahead. So here's a screenshot right here. You can see like, um, you know, here's some weeds and you can see these fish the way they're kind of scattered around out off the front of the boat. Now, if those fish are like over here, then I know to kind of direct my boat to them. If those fish are kind of, you know, right in front of me, then I know that I'm going right down that side. If I'm seeing super thick weeds in front of me, I know to bump out a little bit. So that 360 is phenomenal for orient orientating yourself, orienting, shall we? Yeah, that's right orienting yourself on that weed edge and kind of you know dictating your course through that area and like trolling whenever you're seeing good pods of fish drop waypoints because after a few passes you're going to get good at connecting the dots and basically staying in those fish for the longest period of time A smallie too. Be a yeah, he's already up on the surface. It looks like, huh? Never know though. Could still be a walleye. Did you get a look at it or no? No. Oh, right here too, shell. Doubled up. Doubled up in the weeds. That's what I'm talking about. Got a nice walleye? Heck yeah, dude. Give me some. Got this big thunderstorm rolling in. Catching walleyes one after another up here in the weeds. I'm gonna net your shell. Yours is nice. I'm hooked up. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Pandemonium when you're getting oh, these schools. All right, now I'm going to land mine. And a lot of times, you know, you, uh, these schools of fish will act very different. You might have a deep number of fish, you know, that are out in that 25, 30 foot zone, but you might have two different schools of fish, you know, one out in deep water and you might have another pot of fish or another area that holds fish that's up on a weed edge. And some days what you'll see is uh, the fish in the weeds might be more active, you know, or the fish out in the rocks might be more active. Today, definitely the fish in the weeds are kind of where it's at. We're gonna try to get a nice double picture for Shelby here. Get ready, babe, it's back here. There we go, two at a time, two at a time, Shelfster. That's the way we like to do it, right? Yep, and they're both off, is it off? Oh wow, it is both off in the net. Nice. There we go, we'll give you guys a look. Doubled up. There look we go. These Massive storm rolling in, and uh, just doubled up. Catch the walleyes one after another. Oh. I wish we could stay out longer, but uh, let's let those guys go. Okay. And uh, this weed bite, absolutely on fire in this lake right now, and pulling spinners definitely seems to be. You might even be able to jig them the way today's fishing, but awesome to see that and we're catching a whole bunch of them out here in the weeds all right well that is gonna do it for today's video the rod tips started buzzing up in the air we just had an awesome double catching a whole bunch of walleyes out here but unfortunately we got to get out of here this is gonna be one of those like all day big storms 
um, but we need some rain. The lakes are getting low, so that's good. But I appreciate you guys watching this one. Um, you know, we've done a lot of content out on deep rock, deep transition areas in the past, you know, week or so here. And uh, do, do not forget about the weed bite, especially if you get a good wind, especially like a big south wind um, coming into one of these big weedy flats. So hopefully this video was informational for you guys. Hopefully you guys took something away from this one. Like I said, we were spinner rigging today, obviously effective. You could probably slip bobber on some lakes, snap jig some lakes, a bunch of presentations you could do up in the weeds. But do not forget to check those weeds if you're out there in the middle of summer and fishing seems slow out in the deep water. So what do you think, Shelby? Great day. This isn't even playing up. I know. Oh. Were you just using the mic? Oh, mic. Great day. Uh, uh, I don't feel good. Let's go home. We killed it. Yeah, Boom. we did kill it. <laughs> Massive storm. Appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Get a bunch of questions asked on merchandise. It's linked in the description below. It's also in a banner right below the YouTube video. So click on the description. There'll be a link to Tomboli t-shirts and stuff. And I do appreciate you guys supporting me, um, allowing me to do what I do. And hopefully I repay the favor to you guys by giving you guys some good hardcore practical information. There's the thunder. There's our cue. We're getting out of here. Get out we'll of see you next time.